All right, guys. All right. We are revving it up. Are you ready? Welcome to the jungle, where our tug of wars are resolved one at a time. So eat your elephant right here and right now. You are now entering Podcast Heaven, and this is our series of View from the Pew. So let's go. Hi guys, last week I was listening to another podcaster and he brought up the issue of Catholics calling Mary the Queen of Heaven and he sure didn't like that idea. He believed Catholics were wrong about that and he essentially began mocking Mary as Queen of Heaven. This is something I hear quite often. It's this divisive issue about Mary. Well, let's check this out. Let's see where Mary, Queen of Heaven, came from. Is there any justification for it? Let's dig in. First place I'd like to go is, I want to start with a shocking verse that most of you have never heard of, and that's in Jeremiah 13. Judah was being completely taken away captive and into exile. The king, but also the queen, or more accurately, the queen mother, were being held responsible. In Jeremiah 13, 18, it says, Say to the king and the queen mother, Take a lowly seat, for your crowns have fallen from your heads. Or another translation, Say to the king and queen mother, Come down from your thrones, or from your chairs or your positions of authority for your glorious crowns will fall from your heads they're made really low and it's to humble themselves or as they say sit in the dirt well this is pretty shocking for most of you guys and there's a couple of things to notice here one the queen mother has a crown two she has a throne and three she bears responsibility. I invite you to study. Study the verse in Hebrew, and you'll find that Queen Mother is Gebira. And it is the Queen Mother, only Sarah is translated Great Lady, Gebira. There's no kingdom, so Sarah couldn't be the Queen Mother. What is this Queen Mother? Israel had no queens. The king had many wives, and he had many concubines, but he only had one mother. So in Israel, the queen mother had an office. Let's go back to Sarah. She was mother of God's chosen people. She was mother of a great nation, and God changed her name from Sarai to Sarah. Mary became mother of the church, and the Angel Gabriel changed her name to Full of Grace. In Jewish teaching, Sarah was the first of the four mothers of Israel. And there's a couple other minor ones as well. And they all foreshadow Mary. It's a litany of women marching towards Mary from Eve to Mary. From the fall to grace. Irenaeus was a church father in the second century, and he wrote, Thus Mary's obedience undid the knot of Eve's disobedience. For what the virgin Eve had bound up by her unbelief, the virgin Mary set free by her faith. But the Eve distinctions is an entirely different can of worms, and I didn't really want to get into that right now. But I wanted to kind of set the stage for the differences between Sarah and the different matriarchs of Israel. So let's get back to Mary as Queen of Heaven, or the Queen Mother of the Kingdom of God. The Old Testament lists 23 Queen Mothers, and they're always listed with their son. 
pretty much without exception, if the king was listed, the queen mother was listed right there with him. I'll leave a link below to a chart that lists all of the kings of Israel, well, 23 of them, and their queen mothers. Esther gives us a great deal of insight into the role of the queen mother. Even though she wasn't a queen mother, she was Jewish or an Israelite and was married to a king, a pagan king. But it gives us a great deal of insight into the dignity, the power, and the authority and the privileges of the Old Testament queen mother. The king grew so attracted to her that in Esther 2.17, we're told that he loved Esther more than all the other women, and she found grace and favor in his sight, more than all the virgins, all that he had set the royal crown on her head. So she received the crown. And shortly after that, she became entangled in a dispute with a newly appointed grand vizier who had an intense dislike for the Jews. Now, the Grand Vizier in Jewish history would be who the Pope is today. It is the, the Jews call it Eved Adonai, but he, he was actually the steward, the chief steward who the king put in charge of everybody. Grand Vizier is kind of a term from Egypt. So she got into this dispute, and the people came and pleaded with her to talk to the king, which would get her in a lot of trouble. It, he could kill her. But she agreed to intercede for the people before the king. But she was really worried about it. So she prepared by gathering a bunch of Jews around her for prayer and fasting. She clothed herself in the robes of a queen mother, and with fear and trembling, she went to see the king. And the king greeted her with loving kindness. He comforted her with soothing words and said to her, What is it, Esther? I'm your brother. Take courage. You shall not die. For the law applies only to the people. Come near. And she interceded for the people. So we see one of the roles throughout history was the intercession of the Queen Mother to the King for the people. We see the same thing in the Davidic Kingdom. The Queen Mother Bathsheba went to King Solomon to speak to him for Adonijah. The king stood up to meet her, bowed down to her, and sat her down on his throne. He also had a throne brought in for the Queen Mother and she sat down at his right hand. Here we see the same thing that Christ said to his mother at the wedding of Cana. She sits down and says, at the king, King Solomon, said to his mother, the, the queen mother, ask it, my mother, for I will not refuse you. So it's really hard to argue that in the house of David, her office, the queen mother, was also crowned. She was adorned in a robe, and she was seated on a throne next to the king. We also know that the queen mother regularly exercised this influence with her son. They interceded for the people. They counseled the king. Mary interceded for the people at the wedding, and that's one of her roles. As intercessor and I know yet a lot of you say well we can go straight to Jesus you're right you can the people in at the wedding at Cana didn't we have so many examples in the Old Testament of the Queen Mother interceding for the people with the king we also see in 2nd Chronicles 22 the Queen Mother's role as counselor I'm sure that these are new ideas for you and it might be overwhelming. But I wanted to leave you with this. In 2023, Catholics will celebrate the Feast of Christ the King on November 26th. And we probably won't have any 
disagreement that Christ is king. Well, Mary is his mother. Mary is the queen mother. So in some sort of shorthand, many times, Mary is called the queen of heaven. But that's technically not correct. It should actually be, she's the queen mother of heaven. So I hope that helps. Do a deep dive. You'll find a lot of passage about Gebira in the Old Testament. And you'll be fascinated. So until then, we'll talk to you later. once asked me, well, what about Mary? And I thought about it long and hard, and I wrote a pretty detailed essay for her and walked down the street and gave it to her a few weeks later. And I think many of you, there's things that you just don't understand, but it's because you're not Jews and it's 2,000 years in the future. But I have an ebook called So What About Mary? And it's available to anyone who wants it. And I just wanted to let you know. Um, so if you're ready for the next step, there it is. Please like, subscribe, and follow. Also share us with your friends to help us get our message out. Take us out of here, Calm. See you later. I recently had a conversation with an acquaintance of mine about something that I think all of us will understand. She began telling me that religion really turned her off. She gave the reason. Whenever she got together with any of her family members, whether at Christmas or Thanksgiving or any gathering, her relatives always fought and they fought about Christianity. Some of her relatives didn't even talk to each other anymore. She went on to tell me that some of her family were evangelical Christians who had walked away from the Catholic Church. And some of her family is still Catholics. Well, they didn't like each other. It sickened her and she did not want anything to do with religion anymore. It hurt her deeply. You could tell from the sadness in her eyes, she had been going through a lot of pain about it. I let her know that I shared many of those experiences. I think it is a common experience for all of us. Our anxiety grows seemingly minute by minute until the fateful day of the dreaded family gathering. So what do we do? Either we run away, we won't go, or we go and to try to tune it all out. Get it, I've been there and I've done that. I was fed up and I was filled to the brim. If it sink a fork in me, I started to tune it out and my mind would wander. My eyes would roll back in my sockets with the sound of dueling banjos in my head. It would drown out their words. I just had to do something about this. I went back to basics and started from the beginning. Without making it too complicated, I needed to begin to search for the simple truth and that became my continual prayer. So we want to partner with you and work together. We grow. Check out our website, bothbarrelsmedia.com. We will seek out to address these troubling issues, whether political or religious, to help you find peace in your journey. We also began simplyblessedstudio.com. This is where you can purchase trendy merchandise to show off your faith. Merchandise so cool, even the younger crowd will be delighted. Then we have freethevatican.com. This is a great site where we draw attention to the strange goings on in the church today. We also pray that the Vatican will be set free and we look at what's ahead. But please be gentle with us as we go through some growing pains and fill out our sites and you'll soon begin to find us on more platforms as we expand our reach. That's it for now. From Both Barrels Media to you, 
Have a great and blessed day. Look for our next episode next Tuesday. Tom C. signing off. You've been listening to a view from the pew. Thanks for listening. Make sure you like, subscribe, and follow. You know the drill. All of the above. Watch for us every Tuesday and Friday with new episodes. Both Barrels. Signing off.